Anjanu Kumar. I, I work with a company called Concur. Uh, Concur is a travel and expense uh, management solution company. Uh, it is a 22 years old company that has been recently acquired by SAP. Uh, so this uh, uh, expense report is about using closure in production at Concur. Uh, so the problem that we set out to solve uh, at Concur using Clojure uh, is to um, is to prepare the company for scale. Uh, due to the acquisition, uh, we are about to get about ten times more traffic and load, and uh, to handle that kind of scale and to you know build in the kind of system that we need. Uh, we, we need a very decoupled, simple system that can be you know, built into layers that has a certain degree of resilience, sophistication, um, and, and a sense of harmony in the whole architecture. Uh, so the scope that we had when we started building the system uh, was to actually rebuild some of the core components that span across multiple products. Uh, so the kinds of things that we are actually writing code to solve are things like authentication, authorization, profile data, um, identity management, and, and such. And the approach that we took was to you know, build microservices with a shared nothing architecture. Um, so our deployment model uh, sort of has, you know, you know, um, I mean. Uh, that, that allows for multiple versions at the same time. So we have n and n plus one versions, uh, so that uh, so that you know, you know different clients, different products, they can talk to the different versions at the same time. And these are some of the open standards that we use in our platform. Um, uh, so all of you might be aware of 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 of, the, of, of REST and JSON. In JSON web tokens are for you know, communi communicating the claims and X5. 509 certificates are used for authentication between hosts for the sensitive uh, calls. OAuth 2 and similar for SSO and related things. So uh, when we started building the system, it is about so the story is about one year old. Um, one year before we we started building the whole whole system, uh, and in the beginning we we. Uh, uh, we were a bunch of people who, who did not really have much, much closure exposure. Uh, uh, um, much, much less about, you know, um, uh, about, about closure in, in production. So the kinds of things that we used to, to you know, build the prototype were some of these things. So the engine was for, for the build system and we, we have been using um, Property file, Java properties file for configuration because uh, our ops are very, uh, you know, uh, so uh, so our ops stack they are very tuned to you know Java uh, tooling, and they have got a certain you know uh, systems built to you know deal with the properties file, scan them for for changes and all that stuff. So uh, so uh, so our initial prototype was based using properties file. And for the web stuff, we, we used the, the, the usual ring and composure uh, libraries. Um, we were using the Jetty um, web server and the closure Java JDBC for the SQL server JDBC access. And we also used Couchbase for, for, for some of the caching stuff. And the response time was, as you can see, this was not very great. Uh, but then this, uh, uh, this this was just the first cut. This was just a prototype that we're building, and um, then then we set out to you know build something better, some uh, something something you know uh, more more uh, uh, sturdier, right? Um, so challenges that we initially faced uh, while while uh, doing the closure development uh, in the production were um, um, were, were these these things. Uh, so the app. App, app configuration and 
um, yeah. and then the initialization of the components that that is uh, uh, sort of a common challenge that many of the programmers have faced throughout the community and there have emerged certain ways to solve those things um, we also came up with a certain way of doing it that and, um, that, um, uh, that that we will, we will cover subsequently and logging was another thing that was a challenge because uh, uh, so the kind of logging that the Java community is used to that is quite sophisticated um, and compared to that what we were doing um, in enclosure in, in the beginning the logging was um, was was pretty, pretty ridiculous uh, uh, so we also fixed that we will we will we will see how we fixed all of those things and the other a thing that we really needed was policy-based resiliency. Uh, so, uh, so in the age of mi microservices, where we have a little trash kind of a you know uh, assumption, uh, so our systems must be fault tolerant. Um, we we must build systems that that are resilient because it's 2015, and this is something that we we were uh, um, uh, you know grappling with at at that time. And the other problem that we were facing was how to, you know, tune things for for, for performance. How to, you know, find out what the bottlenecks are, and how to, in general, have a robust system and that is performing. And how we started doing that was to, you know, was to, you know, follow an entire pattern uh, in enclosure, which is to you know, build a framework. Uh, so the uh, so so the uh, the the, the the closure community is very well known for you know, you know preferring libraries over frameworks, but we found that we need a binding frame in, in which uh, there are many of the sensible defaults and then the sensible handlers put in so that we can simply you know host the app in, in that shell. Uh, so we built a framework uh, that has a certain number of things that it does. Uh, um, to, to you know, provide the kind of uh, you know structure to the whole app. Uh, uh, so this, uh, so our shell, which is a framework, and that actually constitutes of uh, of, of certain certain uh, uh, I mean components that you can see. Uh, for logging, we are using SLS4j and logback with tools that logging, and we log all the all the stuff as JSON um, because JSON. Uh, JSON data is machine passable and, and that can be used for different kinds of analytics as well as that can be you know, pushed into different kinds of uh, you know things that can do 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 do, uh, do further analysis on 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 on, on uh, those, those things. Uh, so one of the things that is that, uh, that is not very much spoken about uh, in the logging uh, scene. Um, is something called map diagnostic context. Uh, so when you log a certain statement, any event, and there is a certain amount of context that you would like to put into the log, uh, you know, record. Uh, something like uh, if you are processing an order and if that order failed, so what was the order number? What was the context? What, um, what was the, um, uh, and then and then what 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 was the sequence ID and and and, and things like that. Uh, you you would like like to capture so that is a, a feature that is there in logback that is there in log log for j2 as well um, so this is something um, that is not supported natively by closure tools dot logging uh, so we built a wrapper on the top of that as part of the shell that actually does this thing and and that that lets you you know log the context mm -hmm. while you lock on while while uh, you, you log the you know the, the event. Uh, coming to the web server, uh, so uh, we found that JTE's latencies were not really good. Uh, so uh, so I had uh, some experience with HTTP kit before. Uh, so um, so after 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 trying out um, uh, um, and after you know certain certain degree of um, so of of you know of, you know uh, performance testing, we we chose um, to use HTTP Kit as our server, 
And for JSON serialization, we were initially using closure data.json. And that turned out to be not performant, really. Uh, so we tried out the other options, and we found that Cheshire, which is based on the Java Jackson library, is really, really fast. And, uh, and, and for the JDBC connection pooling, um, um, we initially tried Hikari CP, and Hikari CP is, Hikari CP claims to be maybe, you know, uh, uh, the fastest uh, uh, connection pool in Java today, but for some reason, it, it did not work for us. Uh, we, mm, mm, we are using SQL Server as a database, um, and in that case, we found that Hikari CP was not really giving us the kind of performance that it claims on the website. Uh, so we turned back to CCPO, and that that worked well for us. Uh, and besides this, we also need, needed something for for our resilience needs, and we found that there are certain libraries like Java has a switch from Netflix, and Scala has Mendel. Uh, and there's also a, a, a way to you know use a switch in closure, but the way it works is not very composable. So, uh, so the primary abstraction in, in his switch is a command. And when you make something a command, that that is no more a function. So things will not compose the same way once you have made it a command. So we needed something more, more, more flexible. So we, uh, you know, so we built an equivalent of statistic score using closure, um, using in fact 1200 lines Lines of closure. Um, so I'll talk about it uh, a bit more. Uh, um, and I was, uh, as I was saying in the beginning, that the app initialization was 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 you know one of the challenges that we were facing. Uh, so the way that we solved it using the shell, which is the framework, is to have this this workflow. Uh, so our, so our in, entry entry point of the code is. Um, this is Java code because it needs to you know, configure the login subsystem before the rest of the uh, um, that the app app uh, can can continue. Uh, and the reason being, uh, so in logback, uh, so, so configuration is put into a logback.xml file, and that file is loaded as soon as any of your uh, you know login classes are um, they are reached means if you have an import statement somewhere, and if that is touched, if that class is um, um, loaded um, the, and then linked, then the first thing that it'll do is, in its static initializer block, is to go and and then load, uh, uh, and, and load, load that file. And that means that all of our uh, other logging related configuration had to be in that XML file, which is not really that we want. Uh, our, uh, our, our configuration stays in a properties file. Uh, that uh, that that is, is a single properties file. We, we do not want the configuration to be into multiple places. So the approach that we took was uh, so so we first first read the config file, then uh, then we set up the logging by the way of reading the properties from the properties file, and and then. Put and, and then forest those things as system properties so that those properties can be read from within uh, the, the log by XML file. Mm -hmm. And subsequent to that, it, it calls a closure function um, mm -hmm. um, that, that basically returns a ring handler. Uh, so the approach here is to basically divide the program's execution in, mm, in, in Two concrete parts. One is the initialization part, and one one is the runtime part. Uh, so one function, fun, function 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 name. Uh, so the function name that is supposed to do the initialization uh, is um, mentioned in the configuration file that we have. And dynamically, that you know, um, that that function is resolved from the namespace, and and then it is loaded, and then it is invoked so that um, 
so that the function can return us the whole initialized uh, state um, as in um, so it, it sets up all of the components, um, it resolves the, um, uh, the, the, comp sorry, um, the, the component dependencies and, and then it finally returns a ring handler. And after that, uh, so the shell applies a bunch of ring middleware based, based on the configuration properties, whether something is, is enabled, disabled, um, and, and things like that. And finally, it, it simply starts the web server. Uh, so that is how the app initialization is, is done uh, in, in a shell. And for our resiliency story, so as I was talking, uh, so we wrote um, the closure equivalent of, um, of our heuristic score, and it has things like the, the circuit breakers, uh, xenophore, uh, you know, thread pool, and, um, and, uh, and, and the kind of metrics that is required to integrate with heuristic dashboard. Uh, so today, uh, um, mm, mm, uh, we, we in fact emit the metrics data via server sent event and that integrates with Hysrix dashboard. So you can use Hysrix dashboard with the system so that you, um, you can you know, monitor all, uh, all of the commands and how are they you know, doing. And um, we in fact also, also, also did a lot of performance analysis and tuning and after that, so the results were quite interesting. Um, we will go into details uh, in a bit. Um, now we have some millisecond response time within the data center, of course. Uh, and, um, and then the reason that we had this as a goal from the beginning was that when you have a microservice model, your every hop, every, every service adds up to your total latency. So the user, when he sees uh, some some response coming back, uh, so the request might have traversed multiple services, and and if each service starts taking hundred milliseconds, then your thing is really slow. So, uh, so um, so to lower the latency was really an important goal from the beginning for us, and our whole system is tuned for 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 that kind of latency, including the database also. Uh, so to do this kind of thing, uh, when, you, when you deal with sub millisecond response time, you have to actually measure only nanoseconds and you, you have to optimize wherever you, you see a certain number of significant num number of, of microseconds. Uh, because the threshold is, it is really, really low. And the other kind of thing that we did for performance uh, uh, at um, testing and, and tuning was to you know simulate a lot of load because um, when we do some micro benchmarking, it is very easy to get some good numbers. But when you really put, put things into production, when 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 there is load, then the system behaves differently because it is going through a different kind of so crunch. Um, resources are being shared by multiple threads, and and, and the whole load behavior is. Is, is, is very very different. So we did a lot of you know um, load testing by, by by stressing the system for 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 long long duration. Uh, and today, so the external components that we have in our system, uh, uh, I mean the external components that our system system interacts with are you know are the ELK cluster uh, where we you know, analyze the logs. And we integrate with App Dynamics so that we can do some monitoring of of, of of the performance. And we have been using the Yorkit profiler in development as well as we we leave the agent on in production so that we can remotely sometimes check that how are the things uh, um, going there in production. And other so our load balancers we have internal load balancers we um, we use. Uh, Mm, we use FF5s and, and uh, they, they carry out the health check uh, using a certain uh, you know, infrastructure that we have for, for doing this. And as I was saying before, we are talking to the, to the SQL Server database and the Couchbase um, for, for caching. And after doing all of this, um, we, we learned that, that, that you know, closure was giving us a certain degree of um, of, of advantage uh, over 
you know, some of the other technologies that uh, um, and, uh, and that that are currently being used in the, inside Conquer. Uh, so the advantages that we saw uh, is closure um, has the sense of the first class values. Values are first class. When I say that, uh, in a typical O language, you would see that to read or write any any kind of data, you um, you always need a method. And in closure, uh, it is not that way. So, uh, 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 so with the use of literals and with the use of the expressions, uh, uh, so the values are really made first class, and that reduces a lot of boilerplate. We, um, we'll we'll see see in the uh, see in the subsequent slides that how that um, how how that pans out. And the other thing that we uh, we found that is really really a plus point in enclosure is the kind of the powerful time model that um, that that closure poses via 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 immutability and I and I and I and I uh, I. Uh, uh, isolation. Sorry. Uh, so in closure, when um, so at time t one, when a value is it is let us say x, and uh, and at time t two, when the value is changed to y, then both x and y can live at the same time because the data is not not only mutated, but it but a fresh copy is made uh, via structure sharing and and, and such. Uh, so that means that uh, uh, so whatever data processing that we do that um, that is very pro concurrency means if you if you, if you want 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 to you know start some processing in multiple threads while while changing the data uh, you can you can do that without worrying about that uh, that that the data will you know change um, while while some processing is is going on. Uh, so, uh, so you know, there's a sense of safety there. And the other thing that we found really useful was was you know functional programming, uh, where um, where the functions are first class. We can pass around functions. We um, we have higher higher order functions and um, and and now transducers in closure 1.7 that that really really you know makes it um, very 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 smooth and performant. And the next thing that we found really useful was doing things at the REPL because REPL is a great tool for debugging and testing your little changes, your, your little thoughts, your, your, um, um, and to conduct little experiments. And while um, the data changes are immutable in enclosure, fortunately, um, so side effects are um, the other allowed because closure is not, uh, you know, um, purely f a functional language. Uh, but, but so the benefit here is that the side effects, especially I/O, and, then, um, and that, is, um, that is that is quite quite straightforward. Um, that also comes with a, with, with with certain caveats, um, yeah, but yeah, for. Um, for the main part, it is quite straightforward and easy. And being on the JVM is a huge win because using the Java interop, um, we can tap into a lot of closure tooling. Uh, so the JVM's maturity in, in terms of performance and, and, and robustness and, and support, and a lot of closure libraries that we want to use um, in, in various scenarios. And one of the very important benefits of closure is that it is a very, very small language. Uh, you can probably learn it within an after afternoon and and after 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 a week of you know um, tinkering with closure you you can probably write some interesting closure programs uh, so so the language being small and being easy 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 to to you know, learn and reason about has 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 a huge advantage that people can get on board uh, Quite quite rapidly. And now mastering closure is a it is a different kind of story because uh, you, you really need to you know learn the paradigm well. But 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 getting started and uh, and then being productive with it that comes 
very rapidly. Uh, and closure is a homo, homo iconic language where you have macros that can you know manipulate the syntax and you can manipulate the, the syntax and, and you know change things at compile time and that gives you a lot of power. Uh, though macros are advised to be used rarely, um, the only in the cases where you really need it, but when you need it, there is, um, there is nothing else that can help. So, uh, so we'll, we'll see the examples of, um, of, of some of these things. Uh, for example, starting with the first class value. Uh, so the snippet that you see here, now this is a, a small fraction of our production code. And so the profile data is really huge. It has lots of attributes. And this is just a small part of, um, of, of that whole, whole data set. Uh, uh, so imagine doing this in something like Java, where, um, where, where your code would be full of you know, you know, put, put statements. The put this, put this, put this, and and uh, so the code would become very, very, very clunky. But um, uh, since values are first class, they have a little syntax to express things. Uh, it is very, very, uh, um, you know, concise to um, to, to express um, uh, this this kind of thing. And as I was talking about in, about in, uh, in, immutability, uh, so. Uh, so it has certain features um, um, and, and benefits. Uh, and functional programming has its own, 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 own joy. So here in this example, we actually take the metric sources and, and, uh, and, and a JSON writer function that actually, uh, I mean, extract the data from those so that it, it can format into a certain, uh, you know, uh, for for the for for the for the service uh, send, uh, send events, and you can see that it just uh, 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 so, uh, I mean um, the, the, uh, just just a couple of lines of code that that actually does it, and it is quite quite smooth and 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 and, and fluent. And about side effects. Uh, we can see one more example here where we do a certain IO update. Uh, so we are doing multiple things here. We, we talk to the database and then we talk to the cache and and in and uh, yeah yeah and yeah and and and, and in, in a certain uh, uh, condition we we are we are we are, we are raising an, an exception uh, and. Uh, a closure's Java interop also helps us a lot to you know get uh, into into the JVM and and use the JVM libraries and and, and the Java code here uh, here here we are using uh, 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 I mean this is function to you know compute a hash um, maybe using Java API uh, so you can see that Java interop really makes it easy easy you know, easy easy to to you know plug the gaps where the closure libraries do, do not exist and this is an an example of a macro where um, where we pass some uh, some some contextual data and some body of code and um, that is used to you know log um, um, to you know to you know log um, to you know log log some context uh, so this is being used by other macros that can actually pass the entire block of code um, using the context and the whole thing. Uh, uh, so the body of con um, so the body of code executes while the context um, uh, is is being set. Uh, so before the body is is validated here, you can you can see see, uh, see that the context. Uh, uh, is being set, and finally, it, it simply unwinds all of the changes. Uh, so, while doing all of this, we, we established um, uh, a certain set of practices, and 
And going to, uh, I mean, to, to those points, uh, to the first one, one one comes to the mind that is, what is the editor that we use? What is the ID for? Um, uh, I mean, that that uh, that that suits the purpose. Uh, so we do not have any, you know, hard and fast rule that we will be using this 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 editor as as a you know the editor of choice. Some of the people use Emacs, the others use Eclipse and VI. And most of our uh, you know you know things are configurable via the properties file. We enable disable lots of things because uh, 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 so the choices uh, should be flexible. So. Um, and the other practice that we have is that all of the tests and the launch of the code, and, uh, they, they, mu um, uh, I mean, they, they must must work from the command line. Uh, so if something works on, only from, from within Emacs or from within Eclipse, uh, that's problematic. So we so we make make sure that things work work from the command line so that all of the people can part participate in the same way. And, um, that the other, uh, that the others others can, and um, uh, we we make we we make sure that we have the have 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 the unit and and the integration test, and we uh, we 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 are still still using you know code or test for 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 writing our tests, and our integration tests they are also 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 written in Python, uh, just because we also need. Uh, to you know, check the interoperability of our services with other languages, and, uh, and the other language language that we have chosen to you know um, test using happens to be Python in um, uh, uh, in, in our case, and we we are using Docker in development queue and production. Uh, uh, this is a choice that we made from the start. And we are using a Maven repository that's internal to us. We we are using Art Artifactory um, as uh, as our Maven repository to even store store our private jars. Um, and now some of the libraries that we wrote uh, and they they in fact came out of this effort and also also factored out from the web from from from, from the shell framework that we were discussing now. Uh, so the first of those libraries is called Keepin, and Keepin is for configuration lookup. Um, when your service has more than 50 or 70 or 100 configuration properties, it is really cumbersome to you know read those um, by by code, um, because you not only read the configuration, you also have to parse it because they are properties file. Therefore, you have to parse those things. You have to validate whether those 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 values are same, and and in certain cases when when you when you when you when you do not specify things you you want the defaults to 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 be chosen. Uh, so to do, I mean I mean um, um, these these things repeatedly, uh, you you um, uh, you you would want an abstraction that can actually deal with this with these things. Um, with, with these these things declaratively, uh, so so it does certain things that when there was uh, something fails, it, it fails fast. Uh, as in, uh, if you, if you if you do not specify a thing and that hap happens to be null, that will blow up after some time somewhere else, and you would have no clue that why it really took took place. Uh, so failing fast uh, is. No, it is it is very very important, and the, and then just to see, see the example that how it looks like. Uh, uh, so in properties file, we we have let's say some, something like this that says that app in its function is so and so. Uh, so so the way that we define the keys, um, I mean no, I mean I, I mean definitively that is here. So um, um, uh, so even this key we. We will define a bunch of such such you know property keys. Um, uh, so we apply such, such certain certain predicate just to see whether the value is valid and um, yeah, and how to how to you know pass the value that 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 is mentioned here. 
and and, and in one one go in uh, we will specify multiple multi multiple multi structure too and when we want to use this um, we will do something like let val which is a macro that is part of keeping um, and we restructure the values uh, uh, in, 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 in this format, and, and once the value comes out, we simply we simply use it um, uh, like a function because because this this thing is sup uh, is is supposed to 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 be a function, right? So. Uh, so this streamlines a lot of our code because our code is no more doing, you know, random um, validation checks, error checks, you know, uh, putting in configuration and such. Uh, so it adds uh, a certain degree of you know, smoothness to our code flow. And the next next library that I would like to you know, talk about uh, is called Springer. Uh, and the reason that this library came about is Enclosure for Spring concatenations is a function called str uh, in the namespace called project.core. So the way str works with multiple token or arguments is that you you know so it runs a loop where it adds the value. Uh, so all of the looping and the function call that that really adds um, the uh, a certain degree of you know you know latency to it. Which is why, uh, so in Java, um, uh, when when you you know uh, concatenate strings, that is much faster than in closure in in certain case, or in, uh, in, in certain certain certain, certain cases. Uh, so this library tries to you know plug that gap, and the so latencies that we got across different kinds of use cases is this. Uh, so on the left. Uh, so it is red, but it is uh, showing as gray versions on it. Uh, so on the left, uh, um, uh, or you can, you can see this this is code for SDR function, and this is the Springer uh, an equivalent function uh, for for you know, doing the string concatenation. So in such cases, you would find the difference is a lot, and this was. Actually done just to you know um, to to achieve the goal of the sub uh, of, of the um, of, of the sub sub millisecond response time because we were trying to optimize each bottleneck that we had. Uh, similarly, the other library that we wrote was uh, for the request matching for the web routes. Um, these are earlier using Composure, and Composure internally uses a library called Cloud. And when we profile our our, our code, uh, we, we found that you know Composure was spending a, a certain amount of time that we did not you know and think was was justified. So we wrote this library to, to you know uh, to you know um, to you know make it faster. And the kind of difference that we got is here. Uh, so on the left, uh, this is for composer, this is for cloud, and the one in yellow in, uh, in the end that is the, the, uh, these are for for for, for Kafka. Uh, so the amount of time uh, that we saved of each request uh, uh, matching. That was quite a bit, and we 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 are using this in, in this in production domain, and and then the next um, and then the uh, the next one um, that we uh, that we wrote was, is called Asphalt. This is for DDVC access uh, to uh, to to SQL Server. Uh, so, uh, so though this library is not meant only for SQL Server, it should this thing this thing works with all of the DDVC data sources. Uh, so the main thing that we did with Asphalt was that it has a very functional design where at each level, what, I mean, I mean, whatever act, act, 
uh, uh, activities that you want want to do with the different kinds of things. For, for example, accessing the, um, the the result set, or um, or, 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 or or passing the parameters. And all of those things are very very extensible. Uh, you can replace and and then pass your own version of of of, you know, um, of of doing things instead of the default that you get in closure Java 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 And the other thing that we did here was that as opposed to closure Java Java where all of the parameters and the result column values they are treated as simple uh, objects. Uh, so the uh, so the code that 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 closes the Java 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 JDBC, uh, ex, ex, uh, uh, executes it. It it does get object or or the set object. Whereas uh, whenever you you see, you, you, see, you see some Java code, you would be you know setting the exact type like set in set long set date and uh, and and uh, uh, so so on. Uh, so it creates a certain kind of dissonance whenever you are interacting with databases, which is why, uh, for example, in, uh, in in PostgreSQL, you would find that it casts values as integers wherever they 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 are integers because the database driver would have simply you know sent a, the, an object. Uh, so so the solution that we have in Asphalt is to have type hints inside the SQL. Uh, so once this is Passed by the SQL, so all of uh, the annotations here that you can see, right, this int, this is string, and this integer. Uh, so all of these things they are passed, and and a kind of metadata is uh, is formed that is transparently applied uh, to these SQL statements whenever they are they 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 are queried. Uh, so this adds to uh, I, 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 uh, um, and correctness um, of of the uh, of of the SQL code, and subsequent to this, there 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 um, there, there are two 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 performance libraries that I want to you know talk about. One is called CPS, and this is for comparative benchmarking. Uh, uh, some of you might know that Criterion is the you know leading uh, micro micro benchmarking library in Enclosure. Uh, so, uh, uh, so you know, sometimes it is very hard to see that how do two two different benchmarks look like, and to see them, you you want to you know you know put them side by side. Uh, so, uh, so as you can see here, that when when you you know you know, you know put them side by side, it is much much uh, easier to to you know scan the data that you know um, and that that. Uh, I mean, what, what the difference is? Uh, unfortunately, this is not really visible. This is red here that that shows that how is the performance here. Uh, you can add as many number of you know columns that you want. Uh, yeah, but that would only uh, uh, only only work if your screen is uh, uh, is it white is 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 white 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 enough. Uh, another thing that that um, the CPS solves is that micro benchmarking by itself uh, it is not a complete tool for profiling. So the reason being that when you run a, a, a micro, micro micro benchmark, um, it has access to all the CPU, all of all, all of the CPU cache, all of the memory bandwidth, and 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 and, 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 and resources, but. In the real life scenario, your code re rarely works like this. Uh, your code has multiple threads. When you run web services, you you, you, you are probably running th uh, 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 32 uh, threads uh, from the web uh, server. Maybe more than that. Maybe 128 threads. So in real life scenario, uh, all of your resources are. Um, are um, are are being continuously um, you know contended. So uh, so the thing that uh, you know you know CPS does is that it lets you run the 
run the comparative benchmark using a certain degree of concurrency. That means that if you specify that that my benchmark should run with let's say 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 say, say concurrency level 40, then it would spin up 40 threads and and it would start running uh, those tests in all of the 40 threads. And suddenly you will see that the code that was performing better in a normal benchmark under uh, under under concurrency level one uh, suddenly suddenly uh, suddenly it, it may perform worse when the concurrency level le le uh, level 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 um, is, is more because uh, now your sources are being contended for your CPU cache lines they are being contended by the multiple threads. So your memory bandwidth is a finite number in in in, 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 in all, all of the systems. Uh, so uh, so in uh, in uh, in a single single threaded uh, you know benchmark, if, if it was you know faster, if it may become slower if it is uh, multi-threaded. So we'll see. Um, so the source of this, and, uh, and the other library that we wrote is called Cubito. Uh, so this thing finds latency across the layers. Whenever you you are you 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 are compiling code, whenever let us say that your request response takes about 100, 100, 100 milliseconds, you you do not exactly know that to see that where it is spending so so, so much of time. Uh, when you run a typical profiler, that would um, that that would tell you uh, for the places where it is taking CPU time, but not the I/O time. Uh, so to solve that, we, we wrote this small library called as Pegito that that gives you this kind of result. Uh, so throughout the call stack, wherever it, it is taking different kind of you know time, so it gives you that distribution. That if the whole request response took 984 mi microseconds, where all did it spend the different kind of time? For example, uh, so, so this cache qu call query attempt, um, um, other thing takes 56 percent of the total. You know, uh, no, sorry. Uh, uh, mm, uh, so, so it takes you know. Uh, uh, 14, 14 microseconds here, and uh, yeah, so the one one you know output below that that you know you know try to you know, you know drill down more. For example, the cache space is to this point, so you want want to to you know you know, know, know drill this down. Um, you, you can drill this down by by you know injecting more more major points. Uh, so more of these things they are actually discussed in an upcoming book that I. Wrote and to be published by the end of this, this month, and and by by doing all of this, so the takeaway that we had was that closure as a language is it is very very well well designed. It is very well thought. Uh, it it make, makes us mm, mm, very very productive, and the library into ecosystem is actually very nice, but. It might be slightly rough around the edges because we, we did not have everything that that we wanted. Um, yeah, but but a lot of that may be related to the kind of use case that we had. And Java Introp is not the panacea because Java Introp may not be the right answer for all of the needs that we have. And regarding adoption, uh, when we took closure in, in a company, we, we when we spoke with the other stakeholders. And you would find that the other functional programming languages, they are not as much of a challenge as as the as, as the status quo is. So so the status quo is the biggest elephant in the room that is you know the existing mindset, the existing uh, uh, platform, so the existing code and all that. And the parentheses may definitely cause a knee jerk reaction because when people see see a lot of parentheses, they they you know sort of Kick out for a bit, but then uh, after after some time, when when you show them good engineering, that um, that that becomes really convincing. Uh, 
Um, and of course, being, being on the JVM is a huge win because uh, Java is, is, is quite acceptable. And with that, uh, that's all I have. I have. Uh, I guess I have overshot the time. So I have a presentation question. And I, I can definitely take the questions. And I will be around in the hallway so we can discuss it. So I'll take the first question first. Uh, uh, to, uh, so your question is that how did we choose closure uh, and how did we go over convincing the people, so the state, stakeholders? Uh, we were looking for uh, for a language that is suited for 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 you know, uh, for, 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 for 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 2014. Uh, so a language that would suit the present day needs, and and that would make us productive and and then have a deliver thing. Uh, uh, so ARC is a new group that was hired last year, um, and we in fact started uh, out with Kala because Kala happens to be probably more 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 popular. Um, um, and in the beginning, after trying out Scala, uh, so the people felt that it was more complex than what we really um, we were up for. And, and then they tried Clojure, and they found it to be more suitable. Uh, and then they decided to you know, go with Clojure. And regarding convincing the people, uh, uh, so we showed prototypes. So we showed demos that that this is doable, this is possible, this is what we are confident about, and uh, and, and 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 this is, this is what that you know, that we want to you know, choose for 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 our development. Uh, so it took a bit of to and fro, but then you know this thing happened. Uh, so so. so uh, right, right. Uh, so we did not really have closure experience people, but then yeah, they, they were listed. Yeah, uh, so they went with closure. Right. Uh, so we use uh, uh, we, we use MacBooks and and we use uh, you know both the authors uh, for the development. Uh, so we have written a lot of scripts because Docker by default does not give you the kind of hardness that you need to you know, do all of the you know, things. Uh, so we have written quite a bit of scripts to you know auto to automate that that stuff. We had a lot of, you know, I mean, dancing around that. So, uh, uh, so we had uh, had had multiple containers talking to the, you know, shared images, uh, uh, shared shared, you know, uh, um, uh, I mean, volumes, and then that is how, and then that is how how um, we just started that. Right? So, uh, so another question, yeah. Uh, so the question is that why did we decide to you know rebuild the history functionality in Enclosure rather than using this by default because uh, Clojure has Java and Prop, right? Uh, so in Histrix, the primary abstraction is a command, uh, and when you make make something a command, uh, that that is no more a function. That is a command instance, 
and that does not remain composable in the same way. So, you, so you cannot do the kind of instrumentation that that you want on functions. Uh, and we wanted the flexibility of you know having the functions that can be composed and instrumented so that we can do you know you know different kinds of things. We 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 you know we in fact wanted to you know be be very you know you know uh, flexible about what kind of resiliency we want to apply to 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 the certain kinds of you know uh, uh, functionality uh, so we call them in fact policy based resiliency and for for, uh, for applying policy you, you really need a lot of composability and flexibility that we did not find in the command uh, you know abstraction so the moment it becomes command, it is no more a function. It is uh, it, it is no more composable in the same way that that a function is, and therefore you need those functionality. Uh, so we decided to you know, write the equivalent in enclosure. So any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the question is that uh, uh, so the five things that we So the question is that in, in, in the asphalt li libraries, the type and feature will it support Postgres JSON handling, where you can drill down into the different, you know, uh, data elements um, and then type in those attributes specifically, right? Right. Uh, so currently, uh, so so the number of type things that are supported that are actually in fact mapped to to the type things supported by JDBC. So JDBC does not support JSON and getting down into that. So the answer should be no um, for for a start. But then, uh, if there is a way to you know do that, uh, maybe 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 it would be possible to, to you know extend as far to to you know do to you know do do that as, uh, in, uh, uh, as, as well. Uh, so so the limitation that I'm pointing at is that DDBC by itself cannot do it. Therefore, Asphalt cannot do that also, because it's limited by JDBC. So any other question? So thank you. Uh, so I'll be in the hallway around. I'm you know, happy to you know, discuss again.